Good afternoon and welcome to CSE Gurukul Lecture. In the series on Sociology of India, we are going to today discuss about the social class in India with specific reference to middle class and industrial class. Because it becomes very important also to refer to these understanding of class and understand how there has been the increase in the middle class segment and how the problems faced by the industrial class specifically. So let us first understand the middle class and then we will try to understand the nature of industrial class in India. So middle class is very important because it is something which is very common among a large majority of us. We hear people refer themselves as common man, arm admi, madhyam vargya and so on. There are n number of proverbs and terms used to refer to a large segment of the Indian population that constitutes the middle class. So are these class are almost synonymous because what is referred to uh, taking all of these terms is to refer in social sciences as middle class. Now it becomes a popular term and not only in everyday uses but also in terms of theorization, in terms of the way in which uh, scholars and theorists have tried to understand the nature of change taking place not only in the social, economic, political structure but also change in the social and econ value system in terms of how certain values have got transfer uh, over the period of time. We talk about middle class in media houses, by activists and in everyday conversation. So in commonsensical notion, middle class means an average category whose members are between the uh, rich class and the poor. Uh, often it is said it is neither the uh, haves and it is neither in the have nots. So they are neither orthodox nor liberal, neither traditional nor modern and that is why they are kind of considered in the medium and average of the population. So the middle class is not the owners of industries and factories, they are not the capitalist in Marx term but are better off than the working class. And therefore, they are above the those who are living on poverty or those who are kind of poor. Middle class is a social category whose members do not have enough resources to live an extravagant life and do not have the hand to mouth either as well. So if we look at from the income perspective, they have sufficient to meet their everyday basic requirement. Their income being much higher than that of the blue collars, they can lead a lifestyle that is different from that of the working class. So they are neither the white collar which would be the people who are owners, industrialists and uh, owners of the uh, modes of production but neither are they blue collars, those who constitute the working uh, population. So if we look into it, because much of the uh, theory come, if we look at from a top bottom approach, then theories would uh, target the uh, industrialist and capitalist or if we go from the below, it would be the lower class. So therefore, we can also consider middle class as a residual category or the left out who are excluded from both the extreme, from those who have too much and from the others who do not have any basic requirement. But why do we need to understand middle class? This is so because over a period of time, it be has become important. It has kind of led to a noticeable outcome of socio-economic and political process in India. And the middle class has played a significant role in this. All reasonable estimate the strength of middle class in India is bigger in size than the entire population of many nations and therefore a number of social scientists who have described middle class as an ambiguous category, as a category which is kind of very heterogeneous and it is kind of not possible now to use this criteria of income, 
uh, and uh, earlier also there was this criteria of understanding middle class in terms of ownership of whether uh, the population owned uh, two vehicles, four vehicles or uh, so the consumption pattern was taken into account. But because it has become so complex, it is difficult to either use this criteria to define what constitutes a middle class. Now, the emergence of middle class is significant because it emerges with the British rule or the colonial rule where western education and government service was becomes important. So, those who were able to acquire western educations were the able to take up commercial and administrative go, uh, jobs and improve the income level and therefore, they constituted the middle class. Now, if we look into the shift that has taken place from the colonial period to the post-colonial period, we see that the Nehru period, it was more in terms of identified as the salaried class. The salaried class were the people who had government job and they had a fixed source of income and therefore, it was kind of civil service oriented and uh, they had kind of lot of uh, uh, perks, lot of uh, privilege which was given to public employees, but they did not have uh, so much money that they could live an extravagant life. So, the, this kind of uh, shift from colonial period to post-colonial and now when we look into the contemporary time, there is a distinction made between the old middle class and the new middle class. Now, the term new middle class is used to refer to a social group engaged in negotiating India's new relationship with the global economy. And this is taking place at both level, the cultural which is socio symbolic practice of commodity consumption and economic terms, the beneficiary of the material benefits of jobs and business in India's new liberalized economy. So, this new class has actually taken benefit of the uh, economic liberalization and have also kind of supported the idea of consumption on a large scale. So, when we try to understand the new middle class, let us understand uh, the difference uh, between the old middle class and the new middle class. So, a distinction is made between the two in terms of trying to understand uh, their position in the uh, society. So, the term old middle class is used in the sense in which Marx used the term petty bourgeois, those who work with their own means of production such as traders, independent professionals and farmers. So, this old middle class were those who were kind of also self entrepreneurs, they were using their own investment in terms of increasing their income. Now, the new middle class are those who have taken benefit of the socio-economic changes. So, they are skilled white collared workers, salaried employed and also those self-employed professionals who have been able to make uh, changes. So, middle class is kind of as I said is a kind of ambiguous and a complex categories. It would not be easy to understand the un, uh, middle class without referring to some of the literature which have been significant in uh, social sciences. Professor Satish Deshpande in his book Contemporary India examines the emergence and significance of middle class in India. According to Professor Deshpande, middle class emerged due to forces of socio-economic changes having consolidated its socio-economic and political standing, this class, its upper segment geared to corner the benefits of globalization. So, he was uh, of opinion that this modernizing phenomena becomes a kind of uh, ideology for every Indian. Everybody wants to modernize and this uh, idea to modernize was in terms of improving your economic status in society by acquiring a good salaried job and a kind of a fixed tenure job. So, the protagonist of this modernizing process seems to be secular producer, patriot acting in service to the nation and constituting 
what is generally referred to as the Nehruvian middle class. So, this was also a period of development of kind of large scale industrial development. So, as industrialization increased and no new venues for employment opened up, this was this class who took benefit of it and ensured that their position in the overall strata improved. So, he, uh, Professor Despande also points out at the cultural capital of the middle class. Now, cultural capital is a term used by Piri Bordio, which kind of talks about certain values, certain practices which are non-materialistic, but acts as an investment to improve the status in society. So, the cultural capital of the middle class consists of social identity caste, community, region or competence, education, skills, social skills, language. So, there is a lot of value attached in this particular class to acquire certain kinds of uh, education, acquire certain market based skills in order to kind of improve their uh, class status. So, the cultural capital has three important attributes of property psychological benefit and excludability of others and transmissibility across generations. So, the whole idea was to acquire certain economic security by investing in property. Once they are, uh, there is a fixed job, there is a certain kind of education, there is a psychological satisfaction which is left and therefore, to kind of exclude other from being a part of that resources, you kind of want it to be transferred to your own generation and to your own members. He then talks about the centrality of middle class product of the developmental regime. The middle class because of being kind of more individualistic in terms of acquiring the benefits of development, they gradually distend themselves from the idea of nation states and its development. So, then they were more in kind of more individualistic in terms of acquiring property, the uh, technical education, certain language skills and so on. The concern about the collective uh, progress of the nation state became a sideline. The second scholar whose work is again significant is Professor Leela Fernandez. In her work, New Middle Class Democratic Politics in an Era of Economic Reform, she is looking into the middle class in terms of being a significant contributor to the political process of the country. And she argues that even though there are many a time that they are apolitical, so in the voting times, we see that the larger population would be from the lower uh, segment and also from the up, uh, uh, the middle class would kind of refrain from taking this pain of going and vote. But that does not imply that they are apolitical despite being der derisive about politics and politics and that is that it, we cannot argue that they are apolitical just because they do not have the enthusiasm or anxiety to go and vote. The media and the public sphere are key avenues of the expression of the voice of the middle class. So, they always keep expressing their concern about the society through media, through public sphere. And the public sphere venue becomes significant because it has an Im impact on the policy in nuanced ways that are not contingent on elections. So, according to Professor Leela Fernandez, the middle class in India emerged during the colonial time which we have already discussed earlier with reference to the English education and opening opportunity in British administration. They were considered an important segment who served in British administration as well as help in modernizing India. We can also refer to the role that they have played in the nationalist struggle or in the uh, modernizing India by uh, scholars like D.P. Mukherjee who also has talked about middle class and in the series on Indian sociological tradition, I have covered D.P. Mukherjee's contribution to the understanding of middle class. Now, going back to Leela Fernandez, she says that the Indian middle class has played an interesting role 
in constructing the narratives of nationalism and maintaining traditional values. So that is also the distinction between the old middle class and the new middle class. The old middle class were in the forefront in terms of articulating the ideas of nationalism and also retaining the traditional values, whereas the new middle class are kind of more towards modernizing because they are the product of policies of economic liberalization. They emerged at a time when liberalized uh, uh, liberalization had taken its peak and they were the beneficiaries of these. So therefore, they, the, uh, the idea was to understand the distinction between the old middle class and the new middle class. The third scholar which becomes significant uh, to understand the discourse on middle class is the professor Dipankar Gupta. In his work in 2009, professor Dipankar Gupta argues to an extent and argues that there is no middle class in India. It is an abstract idea, it does not exist. And to arrive at this, he compares and contrasts Indian middle class with their counterparts in the West and argues that political economic efforts to reduce inequality and gap between the rich and the poor through social and economic policy was never taken into consideration in India. So the uh, uh, idea is that when we, these policies and reforms will take place and we look at them, the idea that comes in is only to understand the lower class and though not much of theorization has da been done in order to kind of frame policies for the middle class. So Professor Dipankar Gupta argues that what we describe middle class in India does not satisfy various parameter on which middle class needs to be understood. And these parameters were, as I have already said, uh, income, consumption pattern and uh, the way in which they kind of had, a, uh, you know, they were kind of very concerned about values, about what the society would uh, feel about them. So the theorization of middle class is kind of changing with the change in the uh, social economic structure of India. Now, after having understood so middle class, let us move to the industrial class. Before we understand industrial class, we need to understand social stratification in industrial society. And to kind of understand, as we have already kind of done uh, several times, to repeat, social stratification refers to society's categorization of its people into ranking based on factors like wealth, income, education, family background and power. Now earlier also it was discussed that when we look into the industrial society versus the agrarian society and apply a comparative method the way in which it was theorized, agrarian industrial society would be defined as close society. Industrial society would be defined on the basis of open society because the stratification was based on class criteria. So in the class system of stratification, a person is kind of uh, uh, not born just as we kind of look into a closed system of stratification. One is born into a social ranking and you can move up and down and it is kind of possible for the uh, system to kind of ensure that mobility is acquired. The movement specifically when we look into the hierarchy in the uh, ranking system, the pro movement in an open system of stratification is based primarily on individual's effort. It is not a kind of a group effort. So, if we kind of also look into the idea of mobility that M. N. Srinivas suggested in Sanskritization, it was not a group mobility. Uh, it was only kind of lewd into individual uh, change in the social ranking. So, class is, uh, is an open system based on mobility, is based on individual's effort. Now, if we look into the features of stratification in industrial society, we will uh, kind, uh, kind of discuss three features. One is differentiation. So this differentiation would be again a comparative method where in traditional uh, agrarian society there was homogeneity. 
because the production was home based, members of the same uh, caste identity resided together. So, it was the differentiation was less. Now, when industry comes in and industrialized uh, society starts up, we see that there is a tendency to move towards um, uh, similarity in wealth, standard of living, but there is also a level of homogenization which is in terms of your social identity, your religious background and most important in terms of your income differences. So, if we look into the population pyramid post in, in an industrial society, we see that they, it is kind of adding most at the middle level. So, the uh, this middle class is kind of more uh, exaggerated than the top two extreme. Uh, so, the system of class differentiation in industrial society is taking a diamond shape in the contemporary times. The second feature of uh, industrial society is consistency. So, there is a tendency for the relative position of individual or group in one stratification order to be same or in similar position in other order. So, that is again the whole idea that if you uh, your status in certain society and the kind of also uh, look into the vicious cycle that one is born into a poor society the access to skills and knowledge becomes limited. So, the mobility will also be uh, restricted compared to the others who would have access to more skills and more knowledge. So, there is some amount of consistency. Traditional society was status oriented, there was no consistency. Industrial society are achievement oriented, with, so there is a high level of consistency and the position uh, or the change which will happen in the ranking would be dependent on talent and skill and now the talent and skill has to be uh, increased in order to improve your status and that again takes you back to your class position. Industrial society are achievement oriented, but then this whole idea of achievement, whether you will be achieving certain idea is also kind of uh, very, uh, if we look into it critically and if we look into a given example of say the uh, online education that we have all over the place, it is only a facility or service which is accessible to a certain population with into a certain class category who can afford to purchase that, who could afford to do that consumption. The poor who cannot afford to be kind of part of that online education system would be remain out of that system of acquiring certain skills and talent. The third feature of uh, uh, in stratification in industrial society is social mobility. And yes, the overall rate of social mobility has improved because uh, there are certain venues, there are certain ways in which an overall improvement and skills and talents is focused. So, if we try to understand the industrial society, we will try to understand the industrial class in India. And the industrial class as a class emerged with the I, uh, uh, the industrialization, especially with the setting up of urban centers in India and this whole idea of setting up industries in uh, certain uh, places which would be part of the capitalist production. So, the class structure of the industrial revolution was structured uh, uh, around three categories. The first is the capitalist. They are the owners of the industries and the business. So, the industrialization itself dependent on those who are already having modes of uh, production and they could ex, uh, invest in the uh, industrialization process. And therefore, the second category class structure was the skilled professional. Those who had acquired certain level of skills and uh, knowledge were able to uh, get employment in these new industry and most of these industries were technological based. Therefore, they kind of constituted the second category of the skilled professional. And equally, any industrial society would require the service and the labor of the factory workers. 
though they are at the lower rank they are kind of the marginal and they constitute what we refer as the working class the factory workers are the backbone of the industry yet they are in a precarious position so industrial class in post independent india we see that there has been a, a kind of shift from agricultural work to the industrial and there has been an increased in industrial work, uh, class in the uh, last few period and there has kind of also increased with industrialization a large mass of informal unorganized worker who have kind of uh, moving away from the basic rights of collecting bargaining and uh, trade union right so industrial workers they, they had they kind of also a very close relationship with caste class stratification and that affected the nature of class uh, system in the industrial society so the traditional and charismatic elite have been re replaced by professional elite there is another category which emerged with the industrial society was the business elite and this was the entrepreneurial class or the business elite which emerged in india by the middle of 19th century so they were there prior to the british rule but industrialization uh, kind of created this uh, position for them to increase their business and trade and therefore they became more prominent and a third uh, class that we talk about in the uh, industrial society is the working class it refers to industrial work uh, workers and sometime other kind of wage earners and self employed workers basically they are the third level in uh, class structure in industrial society or the what would be called as the uh, Uh, blue collar workers and uh, it, it is kind of also when we refer to the term working class and we kind of get invoked by marx analysis much of the time the idea of working class help evokes the image of labor suffering class disadvantage and despite the individual effort uh, and uh, there is lot of literature also in terms of documenting the a way in which the working class are in a precarious situation without much uh, right and there is increase of the informalization process which has also taken place because of the capitalist uh, uh, transformation in india so with this understanding of the three types of class which is the middle class the industrial class and working class we are able to understand the nature of social stratification in india uh, industrial society with this i come to an end of this lecture thank you